In this section we're going to look at accessories, um, in particular jewellery. Um, there's lots, obviously lots of different types of jewellery. Um, I'd say the things to look out for across the board with all of them are, are similar though. You, you're going to have lots of reflective highlights um, and very dark dark, so areas of high contrast. We'll just look at this example, silver jewellery. You might think looking looking at it at first it's just a case of being black and white like I say it's high contrast but when you actually start to really look you'll see that there's a lot of colour in in those dark areas even um, there's going to be a lot of reflected colour from the skin in both the pale and the dark areas so it's just as with everything in portraiture just having a really good careful look at what you can actually see on the photograph so I'm just going to start with the skin tone and I can just see some of that skin tone down here I'm just going to use this area to go over as an under colour on that main dark band so when I look I can see that, that this colour of skin here is, ref is actually reflected in the, the base colour of all of that so I'm just going to put that in first not so much in this area obviously that's the lights hitting that and not bouncing back off onto it but on the in internal part there it is and I'm going to go straight into a, a dark just going to take my indigo blue and look at the darkest dark areas now so that's going to be that shadow there that one that underneath one and then this area down the bottom made up of sections is segments almost this earring that sort of fit into each other and you can see some of it's got lines as the, as the reflections are brighter down here you can't still see the lines but I'm just going to suggest the beginnings and ends of them just to keep it so you've got a nice curved lines coming across to help define the curved surface of the silver Once again, same as with the reflections in the glasses earlier on, I'm not having any defined boundary lines. If I can help it on here, I'm just being quite loose and round with my hatching technique to make it so that the edges, where the, the dark meet the light, even though they're defined, they're defined in a sort of fuzzy way. We don't want any harsh lines. The only harsh lines we want are these junction lines between the segments. However, on these bits here, there's such tiny thin lines that we are going to use solid lines I'm going to switch to a grey I'm 
using my pencil in the direction of that curve. important to keep your pencil incredibly sharp on all these tiny little lines. That does mean you're going to have to alter the pressure through your pencil as well though because these leads can break and snap really easily and if they do when you're doing an intricate line you can get, if it snaps suddenly you can get a mark you don't want and it tends not to come out. unerasable. But because they're high contrast lines and you know they're going to be incredibly dark, you can you can put a fair bit of pressure on, you can make them dark straight away when they're a, a solid one like that. Here I'm going to be a bit more gentle because up there's some more subtle shade in here. that with cold pencils some colours break easier than others you'll soon get to know which are the ones you have to watch I'm just going to suggest the outside of this spring I'm not going to mark in the lines right the way across that same trick we did with the glasses when the ground glass met the frame is what we're going to use here where this dark area goes behind that pale bar. I'm just going to use an up, a vertical stroke there to suggest the edge. You can see it ever such a little bit, but we're going to emphasise it. And the same with the curve into this one here. So you're kind of joining all the areas up with fluid lines. You might um, want to actually use the embossing tool for some of these tiny, tiny little highlights. to retain the white of the paper. wasn't happy then about where I'd left this highlight. Just taking it back a bit. I'm just going to go into a dark brown now.
sometimes in an area where you've got um, a highlight of the jewellery against a pale bit of skin it may be necessary to either use your skin tone to just define that a bit in other words make this area of skin actually a little bit darker behind than it actually is on the photograph so, so it stands out a bit but just use that technique sparingly because you don't want any line, harsh lines appearing I'm just going to use that colour as well down in these highlights that are coloured when you're looking at these areas of light and dark and staring at them so intensely intently like this for a while you can, they can start to the shapes can kind of start to all look the same but the way I keep my concentration is just to look for unusual shapes within it that I can focus on for a minute so there it kind of looks like a, a bit of a tornado shape that's what I'm focusing on at this second. There's very subtle differences in tone in these dark areas. You have to really look hard. going to bring in a, a reddish tone now in all of the areas of black tone that I'm going to be using making I'm going to use build them up in the same way we've done in all the dark areas on every other bit of the face um, by using lots of different colors apart from these tiny tiny lines here where I am going to actually introduce a bit of black just because to do a fine line in one place is hard enough once but to go over the same tiny fine line with lots of different colours is going to be really difficult so it's the one area I would actually use black but for these areas the larger ones I'm going to build up the dark in the same way we have done everywhere else Like I said, just going in with the black on these ones. This is so teeny. <clears throat> I 
giving it a little last look to make sure that my areas of light and dark are light enough and dark enough and that I've got enough little bits of the reflected colour introduced in the right places slightly lost highlighting there which I'm a bit disappointed with but
if I was to do it again I probably would have used um, the embossing tool to preserve that, it's such a tiny one. There we go. That's how I tackle treating silver to make it look shiny. <laughs> 